Hello and welcome back to KSP2. It's been a day, but I'm back. So today we are going to Ike. Ike is my favorite moon of all the moons, uh, just because of Duna basically. And I heard they added some volcanoes, so we're gonna check out those volcanoes. But it's uh, inactive volcanoes, uh, sadly. No, no lava volcanoes. That would have been very cool, but no. And uh, secondly, there I encountered a lot, uh, let me say, a lot of bugs in this video and glitches and everything. And uh, it kind of destroyed the video if I would have cut in all the bugs in the, in the video now. So I edited out the bugs and just put them all to the back of the video. Like at the back of the video I have a little montage of all bugs, like two minutes long montage. If you're a KSP dev, you can skip to the end and see all the bugs I've encountered. So uh, yeah, you, you know what to fix. So, but uh, yeah, first of all, we are building the rocket here. Fairly standard rocket for for my KSP one time. This was like what I always did, so I just did it here too. Like just with, uh, like Apollo did it with the command pod on top and the lander on the bottom and then we will do Orbital Rendezvous, or won't we? Mm -hmm. Foreshadowing because of bugs. Yeah, uh, Rendezvous does, that doesn't work. It, it doesn't work in the game. You can you can Rendezvous to craft together, uh, but if you undock it, the mission fails. I don't know why, so um, I, I couldn't I couldn't uh, Rendezvous to craft together. It's, um, it's very sad, uh, but yeah it's kind of the limitation right now i mean this build of the game is very very rough and i'm really hope they they're gonna fix it soon but yeah here the command stage is done the lander is done now we're adding the fairing with this horrible fairing tool ah, i don't like it personally i what was wrong with the old fairing tool we had in ksp1 nothing so i don't like this fairing tool give please give us the option to do it the old way. But yeah, nonetheless, the rocket worked. Maybe I'm just used to something else. And then here I saw that I had to do the interstage fairing um, with a little extra fairing I manually built. It's like back in back in the days in KSP1 where you had to do this as well before um, engine plates became a thing. I didn't find the engine plates here. Maybe I was just too stupid to see them. It's a new game after all. So I don't really know all the parts that well. But yeah, rocket is almost done. We have the Mammoth 2.0 engine there, which looks very good. And two Clydesdale, Clydesdale, yeah, two Clydesdale boosters, the biggest one. Uh, and I thought about coloring the fairing red, but sadly, uh, after I built it, I closed the game down, went to do something else, started it up again. And all the colors were gone, so I had to recolor it again. Uh, so if you see a coloring change, it has to do with that. But then, it's done guys, let's get to the launch of this rocket. Let's go, 3, 2, 1. Let's go! We're on the way to space! The sound design in this game is awesome. Really awesome. Like those engine sounds. Wow. I didn't even put music on it because it was so cool. Those engine sounds. Like, I, I hope you didn't want to listen to this video um, like very late in the evening with the stereo uh, because now the neighbors will be angry on you. But yeah, here we, we are flying up. It was a bit of a difficult launch. It's very weird in KSP2 when you have uh, SRBs attached. Uh, your rocket is, isn't as maneuverable as without them. It's a very weird thing I encountered. And I also did a bit of a more steeper um, gravity turn than usual. Uh, maybe it's just this rocket or maybe it's just KSP2 in general that we have to do that. But yeah, SRBs have flame out. We separated them successfully. Okay, something exploded, but it was only the decoupler, so nothing bad happened. And it's KSP after all. Yeah, then we can glide upwards. And here too, maybe it's just the Mammoth 2.0 engine. 
like the control authority over the rocket um, by steering the nozzle isn't really there um, you see it's it's I, I wiggle from side to side that's because of that the control you have from uh, from vectoring the engine isn't as big as in KSP1 and also reaction wheels aren't as good as in KSP1 uh, hopefully they will change that uh, back again I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic with KSP2 I'm sure in maybe a month this game will look uh, a lot better um, regarding gameplay but yeah here interstage fairing is done fairing is also deployed and premiere guys our first piece of space junk yeah it's uh, it's of course my save file so there will be a lot of space junk as i'm sure i didn't plan to do that but the stage the the core stage had so much fuel that i just went into orbit with it and then we can leave Kerbin and go to the duna system and you can see i'm not that trained with this camera yet it's a bit shaky but uh, in the next bunch of videos I will figure that out. Yeah, so the question of the week for you is how, what is your opinion on KSP2 so far, if you have played it? Mm. Like For me, the experience here was pretty horrible. A lot of bugs in, uh, that I encountered. So what is, what is your opinion on it? Do, do you like the game so far? Um, are you more the people that like the game in its core but think it, uh, they have to do work on it, or do you like the game? Uh, don't you or, or don't you like the game conceptually? Uh, for me, the, the concept of the game is amazing. Mm, the graphics are amazing, and the core gameplay is good, but it needs a lot of uh, work uh, on the box, really. And you can see there we, uh, one bug I left in the video. Uh, I made this maneuver node to encounter Ike, went to the map screen, went out of the map screen again and the maneuver node just changed. Like, um, I can't do accurate accurate uh, maneuver noting. And also you don't see the trajectory in the sphere of influence of another celestial body. But I'm sure that's, that's getting fixed soon. But here is Ike. Um, Ike looks a lot different than in case P1. I mean, look at all those volcanoes there. For these craters, um, Ike, Ike look was kind of boring in KSP1 with the Parallax 2.0 mod. Of course, it was interesting, but uh, it kind of it stuck. It didn't have lot, a lot going for it. It was very flat and boring. Here, it is flat most of the times, but it has a lot of mountains. And I, I could have landed on the biggest volcano, but I didn't because I wanted to find a spot where I have a cool view of Duna, because that's the only reason I visit Ike, basically. <laughs> Just have a cool view of Duna. Yeah, so then separating the lander, a Kerbal is already in the lander. Uh, that's the reason why you don't see the rendezvous, because it bugged out. So I had to do it without rendezvous, which kind of worked out too, but then we have space junk in orbit of Ike, which wouldn't be there uh, if the mission would have worked properly. So yeah, we, tar we are targeting this volcano there, or this cold vo volcano, uh, and it, it, it's like a very high peak and we still have a view of the unit. And there you see, I, I can't describe how much I hate the pause function. <laughs> it's like, uh, I'm, I'm not used to it. The pause function in the game is now uh, integrated into time warp. If you press the, the, the comma button on your keyboard, uh, and multiple times, so uh, at the lowest stage, it will just do a pause in the video, uh, in the game, uh, pause in the game. And I just press it accidentally all the time. Please, uh, KSP2 Dev, that's definitely not watching this video, put the put it put the pause function on P, please. Then I have a separate button for pressing it, uh, especially when trying to do uh, like clips without. The hot on it is pretty difficult to get them uh, because sometimes just the game I uh, just pause the game but they're uh, here landing begins I, I saw this really steep cliff and thought I land there generally the whole surface of Ike is a lot more interesting I mean you can see this how cool does this look like this those mountains here there's a, a huge steep cliff for our left and other mountains as well 
like that's really cool and that's what I like about KSP1 uh, in comparison to KSP2 I can't wait to put the colony up here like this here would be my spot uh, for an Ike colony which I will definitely do once this feature come out but yeah we landed on Ike the first time then I did a little hop because the lander was kind of on a tilt mm, but the new landing legs work very well once landed you see they we don't slide down a mountain like in case p1 all the time and yeah then we can get out the first kerbal to ever walk on ike in case p2 and he falls <laughs> he just falls down then uh, i went to this ridge and planted a flag sadly i don't have the swiss flag in right now uh, it will come soon but I have no idea how I can get custom flags in, so I just use the KSP flag for now. Maybe if, if I can add the Swiss flag in, we can fly here again and replace it or put it next to it or something. And then another feature that is really cool, mm, Kerbals have man magnetic boots now. You see we can walk on the side of this uh, control pod here. That's really cool for space stations, uh, if you want to fix something like with EVA construction that's not in the game yet but once EVA construction comes in the game this is very helpful you see I could walk uh, around my lander pod mm, it even works on places with low gravity but it's intended for a vacuum uh, yeah so I could do a full lap around the lander but then we're not going back yet we will uh, dive down the cliff and land there and look what what's going on there can see the cliff is really really big it's it's so cool like look at this that this this rigid terrain i mean the dress canyon in case p1 was cool as well but this here is dress canyon on steroids and it's on ike uh, so <laughs> great job there whoever did the terrain is a is, is a, a cool guy basically yeah then landing here and this will be the thumbnail shot i think I mean, how cool does it look? But then, sadly, I made a mistake and it crashed. But after a little quick load, we could finally land properly here. So landed. You can see once again the landing legs work phenomenally uh, in comparison to KSP1 where they were just so buggy. It was incredible. Uh, but I mean, here the rest of the game is buggy. But yeah, here you can see that's the reason why I wanted to land on Ike. You can see Duna in the background. It's, it's so cool. It looks like straight out of like sci-fi movie or something. So yeah. After a little surface exploration, we can head back. And what I also haven't found in the game yet is um, those EVA science you can do. Like the golf club and also the deployable science units, I haven't found them. I don't know if they're in the game or not, I just haven't found them yet. Uh, yeah, then mm, getting back to the mothership and this docking took ages because the, the time uh, limit for time warping or the time warp limit is so insanely uh, big. Like if you're 20 kilometers above Ike, you can only fast forward four times. Like how should I get uh, my transfer windows if I can only time warp four times. Sometimes I can warp 100 times if I'm high enough, but that's not enough to get the transfer window. And the maneuver planner has one downside. Uh, first of all, it's pretty messy, but the second downside is that you can't skip orbits for some reason. How should I get a good docking maneuver without skipping orbits? Like then it's just a bit trial and error. Do a quick save, try something out and maybe it works. But that's, that shouldn't be how, how it works. So yeah, lowering down the uh, apoapsis, or no, the periapsis to Duna. And after that, we can fly home and this mission will be done. Um, so yeah, how, how did you like this mission, guys? How did you like Ike? Um, yeah, it was a very, very challenging mission. Uh, but here we are re-entering. Or not yet, almost. And uh, what is also not in the game is re-entry heating, like I said in the last video. 
which is pretty sad because I like uh, plasma building up on the sides of rockets. And someone suggested me to build a space shuttle, but I will only build that once re-entry heating is in, because 50% of the coolness of the space shuttle is just being engulfed in plasma while re-entering. There you can see very weird cloud movements. But yeah, uh, we almost touched down and then I would say goodbye. Uh, I hope you liked it. Leave a like, subscribe if you like. Uh, goodbye, have fun with the montage.